live stream that. Wait, I have to pick my nose. <laughs> what are we going to do, do, do today, Brian? We're going to try to take over the world like we do every day, Pinky. <laughs> I think we're live, dude. <laughs> yep, we are. <laughs> hey, what is up, everybody? It's Matt Johnson. We are back with another episode of Real Estate Uncensored. This will be an interesting one. We have no guests today, so we'll just call this uh, what real estate, what we're talking about, real estate untapped, real estate uncorked, real estate uh, unchained. Uh, it's an unchained melody of real estate uncensored today. So we'll see where this takes us. Uh, we're talking all about social media mistakes. There is a, a great Great article published by Buffer, which is the uh, the social media kind of uh, syndication and, and posting tool, and they've got some great, great insights into what mistakes they made on social media, and we'll talk about that and how you can avoid them and what we're doing to avoid them in our own business and all kinds of stuff, so we've got a lot to get into. Uh, as usual, we're going live here on Facebook, and uh, it's funny because we don't always quite know when we're live. Uh, thank you, Zoom, for not quite figuring that out. We appreciate it, and uh, welcome. First of all, the junior grandmaster himself is in the co-pilot seat, probably tech deficient, uh, but that's okay. I'm not blaming you for this. Greg McKinnon. Blow me where the pampers is, Johnson. I am not tech deficient in the slightest, dude. I uh, I just came off of just an epic freaking weekend. Uh, Lily and I went up to a weekend up in Petaluma. Uh, I know it's not like a vacation destination usually, uh, but we went up on this massive hike, dude, a 13.88 mile hike up to these falls. Great hike. Awesome hike. My, my feet are killing me. My team is laughing at me for my foot massager that I am having uh, run on my feet. Uh, but guys, I want you guys right now, if you guys are coming in, hit us up. Let me know where, you're, where, where you guys are coming from. Uh, any questions you might have about technology and social media so that we can answer all your questions for you live on the show. Let's see here, dude. Okay. I got to talk to you about something. The Sheraton okay. hotel that I booked a hotel room at, they overbooked. And when I showed up to the overbooking overbooked uh, room, they almost weren't able to get me a room, but then, you know, their customer service really stood up. They gave me two free drinks. So Lily and I could go sit in the bar, have a drink rest while they found us a room. Then they upgraded us to the club level where we could access to the, to the VIP club and, you know, you know, drinks and food and snacks and hors d'oeuvres and all that stuff and breakfast in the morning. It was amazing. But I thought about it, you know, our customer service, all of us as agents wonder where we have been dropping the ball with the people that we work with and, or where we could step it up to a whole new level of, uh, of, of, of customer service. And I'm just I'm always wondering how bad we fuck up, you know, Australia checking in. What up, Rob Davis, Blair, what's going on? Um, <laughs> And then I got to go to uh, Lagunitas Brewing Company. It was like heaven. I'll post pictures later. Um, but <laughs> it's like heaven. As you guys know, guys, this show is sponsored by Get Now Business. It is a live class. We'll go into it more later in the show. It is a live class where you have no door, knocking, no door knocking, no cold calls, and a budget of $500 or less every month for marketing. Matt and I will walk you through scripts, dialogues, techniques, and everything else therein to help you guys get um, the um, – oh, Matt, they can't see me. Why can't they see me uh, to get the get now business? They can just see you. Interesting. Are you hogging the camera, Johnson? Um, either. Matt. Yes, I'm here. Oh, okay. How Nothing do, has changed. How do I get the camera to go to me? Um, it's just supposed to be following you. I think maybe your audio isn't as high as it usually is. If you're trying to follow me, which is why I muted myself. Mm, thank God you did something. No, no. It isn't purposeful today. no it's, the, it's the only way you'll ever get me to mute myself. Oh, my God. Shut it. Um, turn the camera on. I'm trying to, Andrew. Anyways, guys, let's see if I, I'll turn on my audio on this side, and we'll, we'll go from there. But, Matt, let's kick us off. Uh, you rock and roll with it, and I'm going to play with my audio options so that my mic, I'm going to crank this bad boy up. So now should be doing something a little bit louder and see if people can see me because I know everyone's missing out on looking at my, uh, there I am. Hi. All right. Now everybody can see me. Johnson, back to you. Okay. Now I'm unmuted. And there we go. Now Zoom is uh, properly working and it's switching a core back and forth between us. What, what was your audio setting on, Greg? Medium. Huh? Medium. So there's another tech issue, guys. You don't do. Don't put Zoom audio on medium. <laughs> uh. Yeah. No kidding. Basically, uh, Zoom was tracking uh, all of my audio and none of yours, essentially. So saying, well, Matt must be talking uh, because Greg isn't uh, filling every ounce 
of sound in the universe. So therefore, let's just go ahead and focus on Matt, even though he's not actually talking. So, um, all right. Uh, no, we're not going to do the split screen option because that takes away um, from seeing the one person uh, as big as they need to be. We, we've, I, I see that going on a lot. And, and guys, I'd love to hear from anybody in the audience, guys, if you're on Facebook right now, if you like the, um, the gallery option, I'll see if you can switch it um, to gallery view where you can see us side by side. Uh, versus the speaker view where it just focuses on whoever uh, is audio, audio is, is the loudest at that point. And we'd love to hear what you guys like in terms of uh, what you want to watch on our Facebook Live. So please let us know in the comments if you want to see us both at the same time in split screen uh, or if you'd like to see just whoever's talking at that point. So let us know in the comments. Okay. Um, oh, boy. Here's, here's, a, here's, a, um, here's an interesting question, Greg, to start okay. us off. Okay. okay. Elena, I will not give her last name, says, I joined my broker in February of this year, my first year selling real estate. Very unsatisfied with my mentor. They're never available and the training at our company. I've been offered a buyer's agent position with the top producing team in our area. Any tips on changing brokers gracefully? Uh, that really comes down to your bro you and your broker relationship. I mean, if they aren't, you aren't getting what you need, kind of like a relationship, if you aren't getting what you need, you got to bounce. Um, uh, I would do it, go in, explain why you're, re you're leaving. You are an independent contractor. So you have the ability to do what you want when you want. Some of them will actually be like, you know what, go ahead, go on your way. Others will be dickheads and they will try to keep you there like a, like a spouse beating fool. No, I'm kidding. But you know, it, <laughs> what they were, I mean, what really is going to take place is that you just need to go in and talk to them, let them know what's going on. Um, and then at that point, if they have to cancel your listings and then switch them over to a new, the new brokerage, you know what, then do that. But no matter mm -hmm. what, if I hear this from a lot of folks, Matt, and that's why you and I have getting out business, rockstar prospecting. We have two new different modes that we're launching on our different products we're launching. Plus, you know, we we'll talked today for an hour and a half about other products we're going to launch. People don't get a lot of the training, coaching support, you know, that they, people really need in this injury. I mean, in industry, I mean, right now, Andrew, oh, there's, uh, there's a lot of injury. Yeah. There's a lot of injury, a lot of injury. And everybody likes a split screen. So we're going to you know, leave it on split screen. Um, and Andrew Graham was on right now, guys. He's the founder of Live Leap, which has given us the ability right now. If you guys look down on the feed, you see the, the 15 shares. I mean, he's going to be doing some really cool stuff with some really big companies that I can't tell you about yet. But I mean, this stuff is awesome. And this is the type of tech support that you should be getting to help your career grow and blow up from here. But people just never see it. All right. Mm -hmm. And so I really think that you just need to watch out for yourself, protect yourself and move on to the next level so that uh, whatever broker you do go to can support you in the ways that you need. So that would be my suggestion on that. And thank you guys for your support, letting us know what you like. It is uh, all split screen, Matt. So they uh, don't see it. just I'm want to look at us. All right. It just, it just goes to show it's better to ask than to guess because yes. my guess, I might as well, well, here's the deal. I just might as well assume that my guess will not be accurate because whatever I like is I usually like the opposite of what most people like. And I should just start going off of that. Well, so whatever Matt, my gut is, whatever Matt's gut reaction is, go with the opposite. That's, that means that's you have our to advice for today. Listen to me at all times in life and in business and your life will be peachy green. Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> really? That's, that's interesting. Uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to remind you about, about that about two months from now when I bring up the uh, when there's doubt, there is no doubt, and, and you know why. Oh, blow me. Dude. <laughs> All right, All right we got another moving. question. All right, so, uh, so Guy Levy says, so this is in the LGSO group, so there was a no door knocking the other day. lady was telling me how she might be interested in selling next year, but that she probably used the agent that she used last time. <gasps> so any, I oh, know, yeah, Ugh, it just, yeah. oh, horrible. <clears throat> any thoughts on what I can say to change her mind about this? Greg, what say you? Ma'am, have you ever stuck your finger in a light socket? Do you want to do that again? No, probably not. <laughs> well, what if it's just the buyer's agent who got her into that home area? What if they did a fantastic job? Oh, man, you get a question. Though, I mean, have they stayed in contact? When's the last time they've, they've been proactively marketing for you? Like I am right now when I'm doing my outbound calls or door knocks or prospecting in any way, shape, or form. You know, see if there's a chink in the armor there you know, you know, so that you can maybe get in there and start showing your value. If there is strong loyalty though, if they can say, hey, it's Greg McDaniel with the McDaniel Callahan real estate team, you know, it, there's probably a pretty good chance you're not gonna be able to get in, in there as much as you try. Don't be a sleazy, sleazy salesperson and try every tactic under the sun. You need to bring more value, more content and a bigger why for them to work with you than just on some sleazy come online. 
And when I say come online, yeah. I mean a dumbass script. That, so, sir, if I could get you blah, blah, blah for your house, would you think about using me? Um, I think anybody would. And I'm going to go talk to my agent about that price. Bring okay. more value. Talk to them about what, the, what you can do that, that most, not don't say theirs, but most other agents won't or can't do. And it could be technology. It could be marketing. It could be anything among anything like that. Okay. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's a fine, it's a fine line to walk, but I mean, you work with a lot of big teams. I mean, what's something that you've seen in the past? Well, when you run into that and, and it, the, the idea is you want to make an impression that you are different. You don't have to put it in terms of being better. You want to put it in terms of being different. So like, uh, this is how I would handle it. Like in the moment, knowing what I would have like kind of in my back pocket to give them, you would say, great. I, I totally understand that you're probably, it sounds like you're really comfortable with that, with that agent. Um, just out of curiosity, were they the ones that, that represented you and helped you buy the home? Mm. And let, let's say they said, yes, so that, that's great. So great. It sounds like they're, they're a great buyer's agent. Sounds like they're really good at helping buyers find their next properties. Uh, and here's what makes us a little bit different. See, we are marketing specialists. And so we have agents on our team that work with buyers and help them go out and find their dream home. And that's great. Uh, but on the marketing side, when we list a home, it's our job to go out and find buyers, which is quite a bit different than someone that helps you go out and find a home. And we have a whole kind of marketing package in terms of what we do for sellers. So there's a lot that goes into that. I won't bore you with the details, but I will, what I will do is I will have uh, one of our couriers drop off a, a package to you that will kind of take you through our marketing systems and let you know. That way you can keep us in mind. It's always good, good to get a second opinion on your home value and, and a second opinion on how you would market the property, even if you end up going with that agent. Does that sound fair? And of course, there is, you know, if it's if you're presenting it like a second opinion, um, you know, nobody's going to say no to getting a second opinion. Nobody's going to say no to having like a marketing plan dropped off at their house by a courier. Like it just makes you sound completely different. Um, whether you can, and you can do that whether you're a team or not. You can literally have a pre listing package and pay someone on TaskRabbit ten bucks to shuttle it over there. True. Uh, they don't have to know it's somebody that you hired literally for just that one task or have your in, if you have, like I do a deadbeat buddy that is a musician and doesn't actually have a job, uh, pay him 10 bucks to go ship it over there. So is that what you do on your weekends? <laughs> That's what I do on my weekends. <laughs> yeah. I am the deadbeat buddy. Greg. I pay, I pay myself. I give myself a nice smack on the butt as I go out the door with other people's pre-listing packages. Just all get on oh, out there man. and be somebody. <laughs> now go oh, to live with those God. packages and bring your paper bag lunch. Cause you can't afford dinner. <laughs> it's funny. Uh, oh man but uh right. yeah so hopefully that makes sense to everybody we've got a lot of stuff to get into as we mentioned uh, the show is brought to you by getting out business you can go to get business.com check that out um but let's get into this uh the 10 social media mistakes uh so this mm. is a really interesting article because if anybody knows who buffer is so they created a a social media kind of posting site. So essentially you can li link up all of your social media accounts like Facebook, LinkedIn, Twitter, yada, yada to this site. And you can go in there and send, link everything up so that you can go into this one place to post and schedule in advance content to post to all these different places. Now, one of the interesting things is guess what? what? One of the main my mistakes that they made. What was it? Uh, Matt? It was, it was, let me see. Mistake number three. Mistake number three, posting the same content across platforms. Bad. Mm. Bad Greg. Bad, Bad. Greg. <laughs> Why is it me? <laughs> because, you can, because you tell people all the time to do that. Oh, just take the video, slap it up on YouTube, then take that, go put that link on LinkedIn and blah, blah. You know, like it's, uh, you know, like you can just take the same type of content and say, say you know, like, what is it? Uh, syndicate it out to 11 different places. Mm -hmm. That's only true. It does not work the best. And here's what they found out. Um, so tailored content for each platform is what actually builds reach and engagement. So we often recommend people to share unique content for each of the social media platforms because the platforms are set up differently and people have different expectations for the content they want to see on each platform. 100% true. They give a great example of hashtags on Instagram where they don't have the same effect on Facebook. I see this a lot where people post from Instagram to Facebook. And I don't know about you. I've, I don't use hashtags on Facebook. No. Uh, I don't know many people that do, but you definitely see a ton of people putting like eight to 10 hashtags in their Facebook posts, uh, some of which are native. They're actually thinking that people are using hashtags on Facebook, so they're manually putting them in there. Some of them are just reposted from Instagram, which I, I get that. 
but still you want to go in there and have different posts and, and different content for the different places that you are. That's one of the, um, that's one of the, the big mistakes that Buffer made and that hopefully we can all learn from. Now, that also ties into one of their other mistakes, which was mistake number two, being on all social media platforms, right? Yeah. So that I think that's that's where the idea that you can just kind of take the same content and post it out in five different places comes from us feeling like we have to be on all these different places. And hopefully we can set some people free from that today. You know, I, I we've talked about it several times on the show. Um that you know, if you don't like something or if you're not good at it, don't do it. We we're Twitter yeah. retarded. We openly admit that. Um, and so we don't do a lot, a lot on Twitter, Matt, you're really good on LinkedIn. I'm not so much on it. Uh, so I don't do a whole lot on, on LinkedIn, but I am big on Facebook. Um, mm-hmm. and if, as soon as I can find a way to do Pinterest more and more, I like that, but I'm, I'm getting more into Instagram, but I do think that there is something to be said. If you do it in moderation, not in excess, I think it's okay to repost some content, not all mm-hmm. content. Don't be an automatic posting machine. Yeah. Um, and I mean, it, like I went for, so Lily and I went for a hike and then we went to Lagunitas Brewing Company, right? Over the weekend, mm-hmm. like I talked about. If I want, if I'm going to share a picture of us at Lagunitas or on the hike next to the falls on Instagram, I think that's appropriate to share across those two platforms because it's, it's visually stimulating. People are like, oh, that's cool. But if you do like 15 fucking hashtags about mm-hmm. shit that just doesn't matter, that's when people get annoyed. I have a friend of mine, her sister. Oh, she needs to go to hashtag anonymous. It is so bad. I mean, it's it's visibly annoying. Like I want to slip my, sit there and just slap her and be like, Pah! "Stop fucking using hashtags, bitch!" But I can't. She's a friend of mine. <laughs> I would just I would like to propose that we come out with the Greg McDaniel one step social media recovery plan, and it's just you step into a room and you smack them first thing. Stop using hashtags and then just send them right out the other the other door of the room. <laughs> Kick them square in the, in, in, the, in the tushy and be like, bitch, That's be right. gone. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's awesome. Oh, man. Yeah, this is uh, – Seth Gooden has a great kind of idea for this, which is uh, he said uh, if anybody's read Tools of Titans by Tim Ferriss where he interviewed uh, Seth Godin, you might already know this, but uh, if not, go get the book. So, so Tim Ferriss asked – you know, marketing expert and, you know, I don't know, 71 time best selling author, Seth Godin, like what his most out of all the 3000 posts on his blog that he would recommend somebody start with. And he said that the, the one that you would start with is first 10, which is the idea that if you have, if you have something to sell or, or some service or product that you offer first, be valuable to just 10 people. Can you be valuable? Just like focus on just being valuable to 10 people. Uh, and, and that's he, Seth is also a big proponent of, because he blogs. Essentially, he only uses social media to kind of point to his blog. That's all he does on social media when wildly successful because he started with that same mentality of, hey, be be super, super valuable in one place to one group of people show up there consistently and deliver consistent value in one place. And if if you can master that and you have enough other con- type of, con- of content and you want to build a social media following somewhere else, then focus on also being super, super valuable in that other place. But we definitely, um, you know, service pros and small biz owners and salespeople, like we, we, we way give into kind of the Grant Cardone, you have to be everywhere, you have to be omnipresent. And like I keep trying to remind people, Grant Cardone has an entire content team. Grant Cardone is not writing his own tweets. He's talking a lot. And some 22-year-old fresh out of college is grabbing what he's saying and multiplying it into 37 tweets a day or whatever the hell it is. So we have to keep that in mind. It's you as an individual business person do not have time for that stuff. And, and probably it's not the best use of your time either. Um, yeah. Once you can get to the point where you can be really, really valuable in one place, then maybe look to expand to another place. But until then, just focus on being super valuable in one channel. I mean, I, I, that's why you and I have picked Facebook as our one, our kind of go-to place because we we can it can be leveraged on multiple different levels. It's you can good for Facebook old people. Messenger, yeah, it's oh. good for the old people, you know. <laughs> and so, uh, what I would say is that uh, since since I am the elder in the room, you shall listen to my wishes, Johnson, and respect the elders. <laughs> you are a Bible man. You should you should understand this. Well, first of all, I read I read something interesting the other day, uh, which is that uh, it, it was a an older guy quoted this. It, it was a, he was like seventy. He's like, you know, on the outside, I'm I may be seventy, but behind these eyes, I'm eighteen. Which made me think that 
it's the same way for me. Like I'm in my thirties, but behind that, I feel like I'm about 25, but under that is another 70 year old man. I'm pretty oh, sure that I've just like deep, deep down. I've always been 70 years old. Oh, you are, dude. You are an old curmudgeon. Like, oh, no, no, twibber, shabber, shabber. <laughs> get off but, my lawn, Greg. <laughs> get off my lawn before I turn the sprinklers on you, you whoever snapper. That's right. No, but they wouldn't be talking about social media and everything else. But I mean, it's, uh, it, it is something you guys need to choose, and that's that's where we should leave it. We, we got a lot to get into, Johnson. We're only we do. 20 minutes into this thing, and fuck, man, you keep lollygagging over there You're like an old fuddy-duddy. So let's get moving. Uh, well, I've got a question that I want to cover here from Isaac uh, Maximoff, who's watching the show. Do you guys do listing presentations on an iPad? Um, so Jeff Cohn, my business partner on Elite Real Estate Systems, his entire team in Omaha, uh, which is at 28, 29 agents, they do have an iPad listing presentation. Um Aaron uh, Wittenstein it also, uh, who mm -hmm. I'm working on with Expired Mastery Elite. Uh, go check that out, guys. By the way, expiredmasterelite.com. Um, he does his presentations on the iPad, and here's why. Because as opposed to doing a CMA, he comes there with the iPad with the intention of setting the price with them on the spot in the listing appointment. So it's a mm. very... And that's a very high value, high confidence strategy to go in there and, and basically go in with the complete confidence that you're going to kind of show them the magic essentially behind the scenes. You're going to bring up the comps live with them and say, let's look at what the numbers are telling us and, and then be able to set the price and persuade them that's the right price that you want all within the listing appointment. Now, if you're a newer agent, you're still not comfortable, you're, you're getting comfortable using your own MLS, don't do that. Um, but that is one of the advantages of going in with an iPad listing presentation is you can go in and set the numbers in advance, which enables you to not have to run a CMA in advance, which saves you time. And it gives you the ability to really demonstrate competence and experience and expertise right on the fly with them in the listing presentation by whipping through the comps right with them and figuring out what price bracket number one to attack and then number number two within that is the exact price within that so greg um fill me in a little bit on how you do your listening presentation i just walking bitches what's up i'm a realtor <laughs> all right let's get down to business um really how's what that, i do is how like well is that working for you pretty fucking well actually <laughs> uh, um damn it I don't have a listing book close enough to me to grab, but this is the light version of it. Right. Hey, Dory, can you grab me a listing book out of that right over there so I can show them? This is, I go on with this kind of explaining my team. I'll show you guys the listing book. And I just sit down. I bring a, um, a, 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 a the listing thing on the team book and everything else. Midori's grabbing it for me right behind me. Um, I also bring a RPR report for him because I do a two-step listing presentation. I know some of you guys are like, two steps. You know, what was that? What was that one comment, Matt? When you do a two-step listing presentation, your first step is previewing my new listing. <laughs> yeah, something like that. <laughs> step one, let interview. Step two, go preview my new listing. So yeah. I bring this as my listing presentation book, really kind of showing off the team. It's high, you know, really thick paper. It does have a thud factor yep. uh, 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 to it. Yeah, so especially when you this. drop it on your mic. Can you please stop doing that? Like that. Um, to cut that in post. Thank you, Greg. Fuck that. No, you're not. <laughs> um, and so with this thing, I will roll in and then I'm an RPR report, which I don't have printed out because I didn't know we we're going to go over this, but I bring that in and I just start using us, we team, all these different verbiages, you know, to really, you know, get people going and helping them understand what we're doing. Okay. Um, and then I do a, with tech on the way out, I use, you know, one of the few different, uh, posting apps, uh, where I can take a couple of photos of their home, put it into a collage, put some music behind it and zingo, uh, mm -hmm. out it goes. And it goes out you know, to, uh, they, they get it as a thank you right off the bat. They show our tech savviness, so on and so forth. It has been proven to be very effective. I come back, I talk to them about the timing and the whole nine. But I mean, we do have what, what we call our brag book. We do do that. Uh, I said do do again. Um, but it is, don't shake your head at me like you're annoyed. I, I am annoyed. <laughs> <laughs> you always know what's going to happen. You're like a cat, dude. You, you, that tail just that's just flicking back and forth ready to strike at any second mm -hmm. uh but that's how we do our, do our listing presentations i do it really 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 just open and calm and relaxed and just kick back uh i don't get all hyper about it i don't put on a three-piece suit i don't recur scripts and lines i go into the property looking for an ability to build a relationship right off the bat it's kind of like a first date i'm complimenting them on the house on asking about their timing you know where are they looking to go expectations where they're looking for an agent you know blah, blah 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 i go down my laundry list of questions and 
by the end of it, usually people are smiling and thanking me for coming over and looking forward to our next conversation and stuff along those lines because I didn't make it feel salesy. I made it feel like a, a new friend had come over to the house for the first time. And mm -hmm. so many agents get so caught up on what's your listing presentation? What's this? What's that? Well, when you get in the mindset of having a certain sequence taking place, human nature is going to step in. It's not going to allow that to happen. Nine, you know, 90% of the time, maybe 10% of the time you can go, go to, uh, you know, stay on task exactly the way in your mind think you, you think you should do it. But the reality of the fact, it's not going to happen that way. So you need to be willing to be, you know, have, like I always say, have a backbone up for a script an idea of an outline, you know, strategic plan. And then with that, you know what, just be able to veer off right and veer off left whenever needed. But I always, like everything else, man, I just keep everything real light and breezy and fun and relaxed and people, mm -hmm. people gravitate towards it. Yeah. Love it. Yeah. We should, uh, one of these times we should put together a, uh, roadmap to a successful listing console. Show up naked. Good. Uh, well that's step one. <laughs> <laughs> step, step two is to preview Rob's new listing. So show up <laughs> naked. You're going to go home without the listing. And then the next thing you know, you're at the preview Rob's listing. Uh, Rob, <laughs> St. Rob St. John is the one that put that in there. Step one, build rapport. Step two, preview my listing. We love it. Thank you, Rob, for reminding us of the, the exact phrasing. So let's do this. Guys, post in here right now. Tell us what your first two or three steps are on your listing presentation so that everyone can guide and get an idea of what everyone else's listing presentations are like. So do you do a one-step or do you do a two-step? Put a one or a two uh, in the comments, please. Uh, and then after that, if you want to put in that same post, po put in there what your next three steps are, Okay. okay. Cool. All right. So let's get back to the uh, social media mistake. So the interesting thing about this was mistake number one was that they focused on quantity over quality. So they were, uh, they were posting four to five times to their Facebook page last year. Uh, they dropped that uh, only posting once or twice a day and their reach and engagement tripled. Wow. Interesting, right? So they said limiting our Facebook posts to just one or two a day forced us to share only the best content. So these quality posts resonated with our Facebook fans and the Facebook algorithm surfaced them to more people. Now, I would say most agents typically don't have the problem where they're posting, you know, more than they should. I can see a company having more of an issue with that than an individual. But it does go to show you that you can build uh, an audience and you can build engagement on your, even on your Facebook page, uh, especially on your profile with only one to two posts per day. So you don't mm. feel like you have to post three, four, five, seven, no. eight times a day. I'll do um, because most likely, unless you have a content team backing you up, most of that stuff is not going to be your highest quality stuff. It's not going to get great engagement. And the interesting, thing, the interesting thing about Facebook and one of the reasons why they devalued the, um, the Facebook pages in everyone's feed is because of all of us in business who are posting stuff that people weren't really interested in. So at first you could do that because Facebook wasn't tracking as much who was actually interacting and engaging and paying attention to your stuff. But once Facebook like shined a spotlight on, hey, like, is anybody actually paying attention to all this crap? And the, the data came back and it said, no, nobody cares about our shit. Um, so once that happened, then Facebook basically devalued Facebook pages. Um, mm -hmm. So that, that's a big deal, guys. So make sure that whether, you know, we, we are pretty, like, we don't have a dog in the race in terms of like whether you build your audience on your Facebook profile or your page. I, the only difference there is that posts to your profile, your personal Facebook profile are treated differently and you have much more of a shot of it getting in front of people on Facebook if you post it to your profile. But the giant caveat to that is that not if people don't care what you post, right? Mm -hmm. So if you post good content to both places, your personal post on your personal profile will get more attention, more reach, more engagement, yada, yada, um, than stuff that you post to your page. Like that, that, assuming that all else is equal. So anyway, I thought that was really interesting that they actually posted less and they actually tripled their reach and engagement. But it was well, all so due to quality. Well, no, it actually has to do with just not being annoyed. I mean, if someone on either Instagram or Facebook uh, is out there and they are posting multiple times a day, I'll defriend your fucking ass because it is so annoying. I mean, mm -hmm. I, look, it's cool. I want to see what you're doing. Just not step by step. OK, player, just, you know, pump the brakes a little bit. Let me let me not see your mug for a little bit or how happy you are or anything else. You really want to be able to make sure that I, when when you do see me or I do see you, it's something I'm interested in. And I, I truly believe that. And that's why, you know, Matt has, he's just coming out of the Facebook over posting, you know, anonymous 
class. I mean, you, I think you're doing really well, man. I mean, the first couple of weeks, I know it's been rough on you, but we're holding you back from all those fi- live posts I know you want to do. So just <laughs> yeah. much love to you, player. That's right. I'd, I'd be broadcasting on YouTube uh, live eight hours a day if it wasn't for Greg restraining me, physically showing up in my house and holding me back. I will beat your bitch ass down. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. All right. So Aaron, Aaron has a great comment. His, his, his listing consultation is step one, walk inside. Step two, pet their dog for 20 minutes. Step three, sign the paperwork. Actually, that's a really good thing, actually. So for a listing <laughs> presentation, guys, I mean, I actually kind of do that, Aaron. The number here, I'll give you a step-by-step super quick for you guys. And I want you guys to give us hearts and emojis and type yes in there if you guys like it. What I do when I first get to that house, I have my all my material in my hand. I ring the doorbell or knock on the front door. As I as they open it up, I stick my hand out. I do not move to step in that house. I reach out my hand. How are you? I'm Greg. Uh, then I ask them, may I come in? Very courteous thing to do. Ask them to come into your, to their home. They're going to say, yes, come on in. As soon as you step one foot into that house, you immediately say, should I take my shoes off? Mm-hmm. And be, will, be in the action of taking the shoes off. They're going to say yes. They're going to say no. If they do uh, want you to take the shoes off, they'll be flabbergasted that you actually asked. And then you go throughout the house and you thank them for your time and you look forward to spending a few minutes. You know that their time is valuable. How much time do we have together today? Mm-hmm. That is that that will show a side of professionalism. It will also give you an idea of how much time you you have with them, so you can get to the point. If you're an SNSC and you talk slow and you want every you're gonna give them every detail, I'm gonna rein that shit in a little bit because if you come to my house as a high D high I, if you drone on about stuff, I can guarantee you you're gonna leave there empty-handed. Yeah. Figure out what kind of personality type you're working with. Move from there. And that if you guys just do that, ask for permission to come in. Ask if you should take off your shoes. Thank them for your time. And how much time do we have to work with today? Boom. They will love it because I guarantee almost every single agent, every other agent is not doing that. So keep that in mind, homie. I like that. It's very, very smart. I know. I said it. (laughs) (laughs) Why? It says, Aaron, what if they have cats? I agree. Um, I would not spend 20 minutes petting a cat. I couldn't do it. Um, my first reaction is I walk in there and say, hey, uh, do I need to take my shoes off? And I spotted the cat. I think just out of sheer instinct, I would either kick the cat or run away. Then, then I'd probably lose the listing appointment. I will rip off your arms and beat you to death with your own <laughs> arms if you kick my fucking cats. <laughs> I'll keep that in mind. All right. Social media mistake number four. This four. is a really interesting one. I, this caught me off guard. So their mistake was using only landscape video and images. So what they found is that um, as, uh, as Facebook and Twitter have kind of changed up how they handle square videos and images and they're no longer cropped, uh, square images and videos actually take up more real estate on someone's feet, almost 80% more space. Wow. Yeah, right? So anyway, wow. so they spent 1500 bucks on experiments and found that square videos actually generate higher average views and engagement, especially on mobile phones. They also... Um, said that another fun experiment to explore would be posting vertical videos and images, which for, you know, months now, people have been saying, you know, smack, 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 don't do that. Mm. Um, Apparently, they're finding out that Facebook is showing a larger preview of vertical videos on its mobile feed. Now, I would suspect that's because they, Facebook Live, people are, uh, yeah, well, it's because of Facebook Live and because most people don't know that they should be holding or can hold the, the phone in landscape mode on things like Facebook Live. Yeah, but I've done Facebook Live in, in landscape, and it is fucking annoying, dude. I mean, it's just, it's not mm-hmm. as fun as doing vertical. No, and I understand their Why point of that? doing that. Because everything's jammed to one side or the other, and I have to, you know, what side am I looking at? It's I, I want to look directly onto the camera like this, instead of, having the, instead of having the lens over on this side versus right up and down. And so I did mm-hmm. I did a Facebook Live with Stefan Adika, my homeboy from uh, Central Coast. Home, mm-hmm. Knuckles to you, Adika, if you're listening, my friend. Um, and they only allowed you to join in on a Facebook live if you went landscape. So very interesting that they're saying mm-hmm. that, uh, the, but they also said that, you know, Facebook lives are filming in square. So it doesn't matter if you're vertical or landscape. So really, yeah, that's what they're, that's what they're, they're, they're saying. But of course, Facebook's always changing. So yeah, that's, uh, that's I mean, always changing. Okay. Interesting. Interesting. Okay. So let's see. This is a good Sharing question from content. This is a good uh, question from LaRonda. This is from the LGSO group. It says, uh, does anyone have a creative handwritten note, postcard, or flyer that they send to old expireds or FISBOs? 
a creative one? Are we talking about something along like roses are red, violets are blue? I hope you list your home with me or something with Wall Street. <laughs> list your home with me or I'll be blue. Or I'll be blue. <laughs> um, you know, it, it's oh. it, it's um, I don't know. I don't really have one. I was just talking to another agent, uh, Johnny, here in our office. Great dude. He and his sons work right through our wall here. Uh, and he said that it's just, it's so limited in our area. I wish I could answer for you. We just don't have a lot of them. If you want to be super creative and if you want to do something out of the box for the, for the expireds and everything else, show up on their front porch with a sold sign and go, hi, my name is Greg McDaniel. You're going to need this when you work together. That's got big old hairy brass balls right there, but it's also going to be able to do something because everyone else is hiding behind the phone, behind an email, behind a card. But if, why don't you get out of your office, your cubicle, your car, your home office, your crib, whatever you're operating out of, and go talk to them person to person on the front porch. Go stop by at 6, 5.30 or 6 o'clock at night, not too late. Tell them, hey, I don't need to bother you, but I was on my way home. I just want to quickly come on by and introduce myself and give you this because you're going to need this sold sign when we work together. I mean, what do you have to lose? Honestly, mm -hmm. go do something like that. Yeah, okay. yeah uh, a handwritten note would be good. I mean, it's... Uh, what I would do in that situation, Greg, like, like you mentioned, kind of showing up and, and I would deliver a pre-listing packet if I had one. Um, and just basically with the post-it note asking, Hey, are, you know, are you still interested in selling? You know, here's what we do to find qualified buyers for your home uh, and drop off a pre-listing package. If I was going to do a creative handwritten note, probably the best thing to send is just, Hey, are you still interested in selling? If so, give me a quick call, Matt. K, you know, hmm. KW brokerage or whatever, just put your real estate company. That would, um, Banana pants that way, if, with it being a handwritten note, I would say they're probably more likely to get a response than than going straight for you know. I just checking to see if you're thinking about listing your home. Like they don't care about that. They want to sell their home. They want to get it sold, right? So it would kind of uh, it wouldn't imply that you had a buyer, but it would imply that there's some urgency and some mm. some specificity to their particular home because it's a handwritten note. That to me would get a better response rate than a typewritten letter of any kind that you send. Um, when you get into that kind of thing, especially with old expireds and FISBOs, it's just repetition. You know, yeah. just if you're going to do like a mailing camp, it better be a campaign is what I'm saying. So if you do like handwritten notes to them, that might actually get you a call back because they might think you have a buyer. Mm -hmm. uh, and then if you do door to door, you know, like actual uh, drop by, pop buys with something of value, get even better. But yeah, if you were to just like run something off the printer, you're going to have to send it 10 times. Yeah, and it's just not personable. And people, we talked about, um, you know, good customer service in today's day and age is one level above crap. So why don't we go two or three or four levels above crap and build an interpersonal relationship? I'm actually listening to the Thank You uh, Economy by uh, Gary V and talking about how to make yourself stand out is to go that extra mile, respond to every tweet, comment on every YouTube you know, comment, you know, have in interpersonal relationships with people on social media. So it can be a social media experience for people. So think of the ways to go above it. Um, but Wyatt, uh, you got a quick question for us. You're going on your first buyer showing uh, program tomorrow. Uh, what's, what's a good way to one, ask about pre-qualifying and two, ask, ask for an appointment. So wait, so you're going to show homes, Wyatt, is that what you're talking about? So you already have the appointment. Um, and so what you up here? Hey, you want to actually sell your house this time? Uh, no, let's let, let's leave out the sell your house this time. Let's leave that out. That's kind of like condescending. Um, you know, let's tackle this right now. Let's say, you know, how do you, you know, ask for a pre-qualifying? This is the script. Mr. and Mrs. Buyer, I really appreciate you coming out. I'm really glad that we can look at a few properties today. Let me ask you a quick question. Have you spoken with the lender to get pre-approved? Yes or no. Pre-qualified doesn't mean shit, dude. You could wipe your ass with that. That's about, about as valuable as that is. A pre-approval is actually more documentation. They actually have seen some of the bank stubs, their tax returns. They understand that they can't afford this, the income, the whole nine yards. If they haven't, immediately have them go talk to a lender because that lender, if, you, if, if they think they can afford a $500,000 house, but they can only, only afford a $400,000 house, you showing them a four fifty, dollars a five, five fifty thousand dollars home is going to tarnish the entire experience for them because their expectations are now going to be set here on the quality of the home when they can all buy here. So they're going to have champagne taste on a beer budget. See what I'm saying? And so your script is, hey, Mr. And Mrs. Seller, you know, have you been pre-qualified? Yes, we have. 
great. The, the last thing I want to do is show you something that might be, you know, this much out of your comfort zone on affordability. And I just want to make sure that you're going to be able to, you know, that we, that we don't show you something that might be out of that comfort zone. You can understand where I'm coming from, right? And they'll say yes. Then you go back and you, you get them pre-approved. Pre um, and then when it comes to, you know, asking them, you know, for the appointment, uh, let's see, uh, go up to an expired and say, okay, so you have two different questions, Wyatt. For the appointment, just ask, hey, when do you want to go out and take a look at the homes? That would be the, the way you'd want to do it there. For expired, I don't know. Matt, what would you do with that? Well, I, it, he might be asking for uh, bringing them into an in, in office appointment. Like, get, how do you get a buyer from just meeting you out at homes to actually coming back to the office, sitting down with you, getting them to give you their criteria for their, what they're looking for so you can set them up on an auto, uh, you know, um, e-alert for, um, for new listings and stuff that fit their criteria and really do and really get them to commit to working with you as opposed to just you being a door monkey for them. I think that's probably what it's going for. Okay. So you get them in the office, say, Hey guys, you know, it's company policy. We like to get all of our buyers into our office. So you guys want to know where our office is and number two, so you can meet my team. Uh, and we can sit down, I'll buy you a cup of coffee, big smile, ding. Um, and, you know, let's go over kind of the process. We'll take a look at some homes that are out there. Some of the stuff on Zillow and Trulia, they aren't on the, are, aren't really on the MLS anymore. So I want to make sure that we're looking at real listings. Uh, and then we, what we'll do is we'll set up a, a showing or, or two. We'll jump in the car or you can follow me. And we'll get on out there and we'll have some fun. What do you think? That's how you do it. You have it with some fun. You put some humor to it. Offer to buy them a free cup of coffee, which is your garbage coffee you serve in the back. But not me, Matt. We serve Starbucks and Pete's. Yes, we do. We're a classic uh. establishment. <laughs> Good. <laughs> All right. Well, this is a related question. Uh, so Ozzy says, what's the best way to ask a potential client if they're serious about buying and selling without them feeling disrespected? We kind of covered how to gauge if a buyer is really serious, which is, you know, have you uh, been set up with a lender? What about the seller? How do you kind of gauge whether they're really serious, whether it's a, whether it's a want move or a need to move, you know, how do you, how do you gauge whether they're serious or whether they're kind of kicking, kicking the tires when it comes to putting their home on the market? You fucking ask them and you just say, so are you guys thinking about selling now or do you, are you just trying to figure out what the market's doing? Oh, well, we, we got to sell now. Okay. What, you know, help me understand, help me understand, you know, just so I know, you know, when people ask, you know, what is some of the motivation that you guys are thinking about making a move now um, versus maybe down the road, one, two, three, four, five years or six months from now? Why, why now? Mm -hmm. Job, kids, divorce, another child, whatever life shift is taking place, understand where it is. Then you know their motivation level. And if they say, well, we're just kind of figuring out the value. Say, so, yeah, you know what? A lot of the people out there actually are. So what if someone showed up with a bag of cash? I was going to pay a billion dollars for your house. Would you leave, would you leave your uh, three obese little wood denting babies and your two cats? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. How did I acquire two cats on top of my three Be obese kids? Because you said you're going to kick them. So now what you don't you, fucking cats. You draw, did you drop them off? You dropped off your two uh, black cats at my place just to get rid of them? I'm I wouldn't full. blame you. Are two furry idiots. Hey, I love my yeah. furry idiots. They're like little mm -hmm. walking alarm clocks. Mm -hmm. When they're hungry, man, they you know when it's six o'clock in the morning or five o'clock in the morning, you get two furry idiots meow, 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 trumping you like 680 freeway. They're just running you over like a like a tarmac on a, a, a SFO. That would oh. be the worst way to wake up. All right. So I've got <laughs> I've got a couple of good questions. So here on the Facebook comments, Larry Sartori says, Does anyone use a buyer or a buyer broker agreement? I was told by a coach mm -hmm. once to nope. always use it. Greg, you don't recommend it. I personally with working with Greg, you had one negative experience that we've we've talked about that before, so you don't use them. Please let me give the team counter argument, which is that I've heard from a lot of the top teams around the country. They all require their buyers agents to use them. They have little to no problems getting them as long as you set it up correctly. Um, Greg, you're just you had one negative experience with them, so you're not a, a big fan. So we don't like officially recommend them on the show, but uh, I know a lot of team leaders around the country that have their buyers agents do it and have zero problems. Yeah, uh, mine, my experience, guys, was I, I brought my buyer in, said, "Hey, we need to talk about some documents before we go out and look at stuff." Sat him in the conference room, got him a cup of coffee, said, "This is a buyer broker agreement." Explained the buyer broker agreement that he can't use anyone else. If he does, he still has to pay me. The man stood up without a word, walked out, walked out the front door, never heard from him again. I'm like, well using this document and so i've decided to build rapport and build trust and build um i don't know just more camaraderie a friendship 
you know, I use the cheating script so people don't like to get cheated on. I don't want to get cheated on. If you use someone else, you're cheating on me. That would hurt my feelings. You don't want to hurt my feelings, do you? Mm. <laughs> tear. <laughs> Cute tear. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> throw your, you got to throw some pepper in your eye right before you deliver that script. <laughs> Hold on. I've got pepper. Go. Boom. Ah. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I was just thinking about you losing someone else to buy your home or going through a for sale by owner and it just got me crying. Oh, oh man. Yeah. So that's the cheating script. Um, but yeah, that, that is, that, that was your one experience with it. I, I would chalk that up to 97 out of your 100 buyer leads aren't going to buy anything through you anyway. So why worry about what one old guy has to say, but uh, that would be my, that, yeah, I've never been able to persuade you out of that, Greg. So it doesn't matter what uh, I think. So no, you will not. Yeah. Let's take a question here from Jamie uh, Wilkinson it says, what would you say is the best way to spend three to five K to generate seller leads in a very heavy expired market other than just, you know, Vulcan, Mo, you know, essentially cold calls and door knocks. Um, he's going to have some marketing money to spend. They're coming into the busy seasoning in the next few months and he wants maximum listings. So <laughs> Greg, you're coming into some money. You want to take listings. You, yeah, baby. Closing. Yeah. You got cash to burn. The cash is burning a hole in your pocket. You want to spend yeah. on it, spend it on some of that fancy marketing yeah. you're so much about. Yeah. <laughs> what do you? Uh, where would you put three to five grand to generate listings? Um, let's see here. I would probably go out and hire Gene Volpe to do manage a lot of my social media. I would go get Live Leap uh, to do live videos and go out to multiple different groups and pages. Because if I have Live Leap and it's shooting it out to multiple different places all over the all over the social media, that way I can be more effective in more places and more omnipresent at all times. After you build up a, a rapport and a bunch of groups you can be into and pages you can post on, uh, and then Volpe, the Volpinator, will help you work on the Facebook ad side, uh, along as as well as generating online leads for you. So if you can be everywhere, so if you can have social media ads running, and if you can do, be doing live content building a content library which you can refer back to which when you have buyers and sellers and everyone else you can say well here let me give you a link to my video on blah 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 or my video about blank 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 it doesn't really matter it just gives you an authority stance that your other competitors most likely are not doing because they're petrified of this tiny little thing up here called the camera and they don't want to do it as you can see midori has squeezed herself into the tiniest crevice over there and she's doing it even more she's completely invisible she does not like the camera i do um and it is something that just a lot of agents won't, won't go towards so that's would be something that i would do is also get out and you know if there's expires if there's you know fizzbos or if there's anything else out there go door knock on them bring them the sold writer and say hi my name is greg mccaniel with mccain italian real estate same you're going to need this when you work with me grow a pair of balls and stop being a bitch don't hide go out there and conquer you know, everybody wants to be a beast, right? Oh, I'm a beast mode, blah, blah, right? Until they have to do what a beast does, and that's tear shit up. And, not, and people don't get that. They want, they, they want the fluffy bunny, you know, the fluffy bunny version of a, of a beast. But it's just, that's just, that just doesn't exist. When you see a lion going, excuse me, uh, Mr. Gazelle, <laughs> uh, funny that you're here. Uh, I'm a little hungry. Do you mind if I just take your left hind quarter? You don't need that left hand corner, do you? No. The beast goes in there and destroys that fucking gazelle and chews on it, and use it as a toothpick for the rest of the week. That's what a beast does. So that's what I'm, that's my recommendations. Hmm. All right. Um, I will, uh, I will see your horrible suggestions and raise them with much better suggestions for me. Mm -hmm. um, so, uh, so number one, I would, if I had five K and I wanted to get the maximum number of listings, uh, number one, I would go sign up for viral marketing. I'd have them put my whole database together and send out like Frank's magical seller lead generation uh, email to my whole entire database. Mm -hmm. I would call the leads back. So the, in other words, the people in my database that responded to that letter, <clears throat> I would call them back, attempt to convert them into appointments. Um, and then uh, viral can also help you out. There, there's a couple of comments on that thread in the LGSO group about Facebook retargeting and remarketing. In other words, taking your, your database or the people that you are, already have access to and running Facebook ads to them. We talked a little bit about that on one of our episodes with Nick Sackis last week. Um, that is something that uh, if you go sign up with viral, I believe that's included in their service to get that set up for you. So I'll go sign up with them or work with someone like Nick Sackis that can do it standalone. So I'd make sure that number one, you build the wall around your database first, right? So make sure you're getting the maximum number of deals out of the people that you already know and like before you start expanding out and try to reach the world at large. So one of the interesting things about when people think of marketing, they automatically, automatically, Greg, 
yes, think of cold people, people that don't have that people have that they have no connection and they have no idea where they have a need for what they do. Right. Mm. And those are the two things we talk about in getting out business. If you actually want business that closes in the next 90 days, you have to go after people that already have a connection. So some of the trust building is done already and they have to have a need for what you do. What most people think of as marketing or when they think of getting more clients, they immediately think of, I need to go to people that have no connection with me and I have no idea whether they have a need for what I do. And then out of that great unwashed masses of people, let me try to find the people that uh, actually need what I do and try to build trust with them. So flip it on its head, go to the people that know, like, and trust you first. See if there's anyone in there that already has a need for what you do and zero in on them. And then I would take the rest of the money, Greg, and I would go probably invest it in something Penny like stocks. Prime Seller Leagues. Penny stocks. Yep, that's right. Penny stocks. Malcolm Milken, all the way. I'm junk bots. Um, no, I would go <laughs> invest in something like Prime Seller Leads, where number one, uh, especially if you go with like, we coach their ISA team, right? So we know the yeah. gals that are making, making the phone calls and we know that they do a great job. So I would go, if I had the money, I would go to Prime Seller Leads, go get their system while they ramp up the, the ads that are running to generate new home seller leads. They can also follow up and call your existing database, or you can give them FISBO and expired leads that might already be in your database, and they can start calling them immediately and start at least disqualifying and getting the people that aren't doing anything. And if there are, they will turn those people over to you who are ready for an appointment. So those are the two or three key things that I would do with 5K if I wanted to get listings in the next three months. And that comes in the two different personality types and the multiple different options you have out there. So, you know, I, Matt likes one, I like the other, you blend them together in some sort of way. I mean, you can have a, but we both come together on video. We both, we both agree that video and one leadership perform marketing out to, you know, are there a database that you have of existing customers? If you're new in the mm -hmm. business, you don't have any, you can do live video. So you can, you can use either of those on either side. Uh, prime seller leads, we both agreed about online leads. So we just did it from different sources. You did it with Prime PSL. I did it with Gene Volpe, but both ways are going to get you results. So there's, I mean, it's not like we said anything radically different, you know, well, whatever. I disagree. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> Jerk off. All right. So, uh, so let's get back to uh, mistake number five. Uh, so this is from buffer sharing only their own content. That was a big mistake. So one of the good things that they found was that initially they were just sharing, you know, stuff that they had created themselves and it usually led back to like their website and it was, you know, blog posts that they came up with and it was all original content, which is great if you're creating original content. But one of the things that they found is that when they started resharing content from other sources, which in their case was stuff like TechCrunch and Wired, um, their, their reach engagement and number of fans grew significantly, significantly. They found out that over time, <clears throat> five of their top 10 Facebook posts were actually reposted content from other sources. And in mm. total, they ended up reaching 1.7 million people, most of whom were not already fans of their page. Right. And so if you can find the right content to share, or we, what I We've talked about kind of where you grab content to share for real estate, and we can talk about that again. But if you can post content like that, you know, places like Realty Times, for example, has some really great stuff. We'll give us some other examples. But there's ab not only is there not anything wrong with it, you should actually be doing it, and it should be part of your strategy to repost stuff from other people that's value as long as it's valuable to the people that are in your database that are on uh, on your Facebook page. So, Greg, mm -hmm. where would you go to grab content to share? I would go to HomeSnap. Uh, and go and look at their data. I would go to Neighborhood Scout. I would go and grab their data. Um, I would go to, uh, let's see here, Realty Times and grab data like that. And you can do original content that's you know that pertains to the hyper local neighborhoods and niches that you guys are going to operate in. But if you work in a large geographical area, you can break them down in bite sized pieces. Therefore, you can create a metric fuck ton of videos, as Matt would say, and original content about each area, which then you'll be raised up in your viewership on. You know, if you do it on Facebook, if you do it and then get it over to YouTube, and yes, I'm talking about using the same data uh, into different platforms. But this is about getting more eyeballs on the content. So a uh, home snap for updates on value, neighborhood scout for hyper local information about, you know, the neighborhoods you're working in, uh, realty times for buying, selling, renting new homes, HOAs, and a couple other topics you can read an article about and regurgitate it, ba regurgitate it back out, give credit to the author, the whole nine yards. Um, if you see something in, you know, the mainstream news, that's interesting. 
you know, my dad loves reading the journal. So he's always, you know, get, you know, posting something out of there or CNBC money or something else. If it sparks your interest, there might be an opportunity that's going to spark other people's interests. You know, I say, hey, guys, I found this great article on blah, 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 blah. Right. And here it is. This is what I found. Check it out. Give me your thoughts on this. That's how you get the engagement. If you're doing it on Facebook Live, it'll boost your engagement through the roof. Um, but beyond Instagram, I go to a lot of people's stuff in there and I just copy it and reshare it. And that's where I get a lot of good, cool stuff. Cool. All mm -hmm. right. So guys, uh, go check out the, um, I'm putting the link in right now for the top 10 social media mistakes we've made because we don't have time to get to, uh, to all of them. That is where we will call it. Um, there's, there's some more, including uh, not uploading videos onto social media platforms. They mentioned that native videos are shared five times more than YouTube videos on social so if you're still primarily shooting videos on YouTube and uploading them later to, let's say, Facebook or Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever the case is, uh, they're not going to get as good a response as if you took that same exact video and maybe uploaded it to Facebook, which, by the way, you could do through a tool like Buffer. You can actually just upload it into Buffer and then have it posted to places like Facebook and Twitter. Uh, so that's some of the interesting things that you can do. So go check out that link. It's in the Facebook comments. Um, you can go check out the rest of the social media stakes, mistakes that they made and how you can avoid them. Uh, Greg, let's, uh, let's let people know how they can follow us and where to go, and let's send this puppy home. Okay, guys. Hey, I want you guys to go to Get Business Now, which I'm going to put in there uh, for you guys to copy uh, and go to this thing, guys. If you have $500 or left to spend on a um, marketing campaign for Facebook, or just for your business guys we're in no cold calls no door knocking this show is sponsored by this program so if you guys like this content we put out you're going to love the content we're going to put into these into these programs you will get business within 90 days if you follow what we say to do if you don't well then i have no control over your future because you're destined to hit a wall but if you guys want to have the blinders taken off of you so you can see the, the you know the possibilities that are right in front of you they just don't know what to look for this is your opportunity to see those guys. Matt and I took about a month or two to really put this course together. Um, it has been really working well for folks and we are always tweaking it, always changing it. You know, a free tidbit, if you guys like this tidbit and this is helpful for you, I want you guys to go and take a look at our, our full, full deal. I do Facebook uh, voice messages, you know, Facebook Messenger, go to the voice recorder. I record up to a minute message talking about how I want to turn my Facebook friends into a network where we can all help each other get more business and exchange clients back and forth. I've had over a 15% return and I do about 15 to 40 voice messages a day. It's a phenomenal little hack. It's right there. It's 100% free. So put it into action. If that helps you at all, you're going to love the course that we're going to put together for you. Cool. Um, and then Matt's address is 123 Anywhere <laughs> USA. And you can uh, go look at, you can go see him and stock him and wash his car for him. There you go. Yeah, appreciate it. All <laughs> right. So uh, make sure to follow both of us on Facebook. Do not friend us. Make sure to follow us. That is the best oh. way. Make sure when you follow Greg to turn on uh, notifications for live video. That yeah. way you know not only exactly when we're going live on Facebook, more importantly, where the original stream is on Greg's personal Facebook profile so that you can comment and we can see it during the show. It's a lot easier for us to see the comments if you comment right on the original stream coming mm. from Greg's personal profile. So very, very important. Uh, we want to hear and, and, and interact with you guys while we're live on the show so that we can take your questions and address them right there for you so that you can get the help that you need. So that is very, very important to follow us that way. And the address for the, uh, the course that Greg was talking about is getnowbusiness.com. So make sure to check that out if you're listening to the sound of my voice on iTunes or Stitcher after the fact. Um, we've got new classes uh, starting up in September, uh, the day after Labor Day. So Tuesday, I believe it's the 5th. Mm -hmm. So Labor Day is something like the 4th, that Monday or whatever. We're, so we start the day after Labor Day. So guys, if you have kids that are starting up in school and you've been waiting on pulling the trigger on some educational material and courses because you have kids that have been out for the summer, fear no more. Uh, the course starts out just after Labor Day. So the kiddos will be back in school and you can focus on doing what you need to do to grow your business for the rest of this year. So with that being said, that is all I've got. That is how you connect with us. Make sure to go to reuncensored.com just to follow the show. We're about to uh, relaunch that whole website. So guys, yeah. that will change. We'll let you know when, when the new website is ready and launched and you can all go and uh, tell our producer, Leslie, how pretty it is because she's been slaving away down to working her fingers down, down to the nubs, down to bloody little stumps, uh, trying to get that website ready so that it looks great for all of you. Uh, so uh, make sure to check that out. Uh, that's funny. And Jeremy Katz, dude, what up, homie? Met Jeremy. Uh, down at Inman. He sent me a little card, a little handwritten stuff on the back here. Very kind to be my friend. I look forward to connecting with you more. But Matt, I think at this point, we're out of here. What do you say? Sounds good.
All right. Until guys, next time, guys. Peace out, ninjas. We gone.